so super impressed with just the organizational effort and all the members here. I'm just like, my heart is warm just to see everybody here and how much everyone's willing and wanting to learn and stay healthy. And I'm actually very grateful as well as I look out into our members here of the age uh, of the members that are here. So my topic of choice today I think was very well chosen. I, when I was speaking um, to the coordinator that called me and said, what would you like to talk about? And I gave her some topics and she very wisely chose this one and I'm, I'm grateful that we chose this one. It's very pertinent to, to the age population that's here currently. So that's great. That makes me feel well as well. I will not take credit for this PowerPoint. I've been thinking about how to say that. Um, in the busyness of the world, uh, I did not prepare my own PowerPoint. It was, this one was shared with me by a colleague, and I'm so grateful that he did, because it has a lot of great information. I know the information very well. I didn't create it myself, though, so I want to fully disclose that. And secondly, uh, I will try to scroll through certain slides quickly, being that you've just eaten a very tasty meal. <laughs> And I don't think some of those would be prudent to show you, so I apologize beforehand. On my laptop, I was I had already a list of slides that I would jump over. But on this laptop, I, I don't have that access. So as soon as I see it, I'll scroll through it quickly. So if I can see it coming, I'll say, close your eyes. <laughs> but um, I'll start off by saying this. How many of us in here um, know of someone that has had any type of, we'll start off with pancreatic disease. If you could raise your hand. Wow, quite a few. How many of us in here have actually had a cholecystectomy or gallbladder taken out? Oh, a lot of us still have our gallbladder. Really, just, just a couple. That means everyone still has their gallbladder. Lots of new business for us now. <laughs> but um, I would love to be a resource for you. So when you see me around at church, or or um, there's a lot of people that know me here personally that can get in touch with me. Um, Deborah knows me very well. Hermana Norma Montes knows me very well. I want to say that from the beginning. If any of you ever have any questions, um, Deborah can attest to this. If you have any concerns with anything that we talk about today, or you know of someone where you say, you know, I heard this conversation the other day, this person just doesn't look like they used to, where there's something going on. Please make sure that you get to someone that can help you answer the questions. Also, Vanessa Greer, she's an excellent provider. She can lead you in the right um, direction. But with that, we'll start off. My name is Lisa Moreno. I'm from the Downtown Community Regional Medical, Medical Center Advanced GI Team. I worked at Community Regional Medical Center, or CRMC, for about 11 years now. I can say that I've seen a, perhaps maybe 40, 50, 60,000 patients in those 10 years. Um, I've recently, <coughs> in the last year, become more advanced. I'm in gastroenterology. In the last year, I've uh, joined a team where all we focus on is what we're going to talk about today. So if it can be understood that there's, a, there's specialty, and then there's specialty specialty. Well, we're one of the specialty specialties. With that being said, pancreatic cancer, um, the most recent data that was given to me was from 2012. And I think that still now today, there's so much research being done in the area of cancer. Pancreatic cancer is one of those cancers that I personally feel that we can't catch up with. We can't get there fast enough. Um, as you know, as of now, it's not 100% um, known in all ways we, we haven't been able to identify exactly uh, which, what's the precursor of it, what causes it specifically before, way before. We know that for diabetes and lifestyle and hypertension, like we were speaking of earlier, it's all about lifestyle, what we eat and keeping our blood pressure down and exercising. We can only hope and pray that someday we can get to that point with this type of a disease. But the new cases in 2012 were 43,000, and of those almost 44,000, the deaths that um, we can see were 37,000 of the 43,000. That's a pretty alarming number, unfortunately. Um, so pancreatic cancer, when we think about that, it can, it can be seen as a number four killer in the United States. Um, we'll talk about the survivorship or how well someone can survive 
We'll, we'll refer to this repeatedly back and forth throughout the presentation, but it can be between 18 and 20 months, and I think this is being very generous. Yes, Realistically, yes. Um, I come... Quick. Yes, exactly. I come from a more clinical perspective. I'm the person that sees the patients initially when they first get there and we start diagnosing the patient. I think this has been very, very generous because that's not typically what I see. Um, so it's positive, but to me it's, it's over, overly generous. Um, here's a little bit more of a realistic number. 85% of pancreatic cancer tumors are non-operable or unresectable. Unfortunately, by the time it is uh, diagnosed, once it's diagnosed, um, I have to say that uh, it's, 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 yes, it, the trajectory of the lifespan of the patient, unfortunately, isn't very optimistic. Um, pancreatic cancer has the highest fatality rate of any human known tumor, and the metastatic pancreatic cancer has a median survival rate of more six to eight months. That's a little bit more along the lines of what we're, we've seen. Who knows, who knows this person, who he yeah. was? A genius. Yes, yes, yes. Such a loss. And in, a, in as well as he was, um, I was looking at these pictures myself, and these are all people that have been affected by um, pancreatic disease in their lifespan. Um, so a little bit of a shock for some of these people. I know that when I was growing up, I used to like to watch Little House on the Prairie, so <laughs> one of those. Um, so let's not talk about a little bit more of the anatomy. For those of that are in medicine here, this is very familiar to you. And um, I can tell you a little bit more specifically about what I do. So every day I go to work and I get consulted. I have a telephone for, for my service that I carry 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I'm on call 24 hours every day the entire year. Why? Because what I do in our hospital, I happen to be the only mid-level that does that with this team. There is another team, but we are, we are the one that's on call 24 hours, seven days a week. Why? Because as we all go forward speaking, the physicians that tend to this type of a disease are very few. There's not very many to speak of. They're very specialized, and we are overwhelmed with the amount of disease that, that we encounter um, every day. So. The disease that I encounter most has to do with this little tree right here. So we have, the, all of us have a gallbladder mostly, some of us had it resected or taken out. This is our liver. But the disease that I focus on every day is right here, this little Y, the bile duct, the biliary duct. This little canal with the pancreatic duct that expands straight through here is the most specialized area that we work on. So what do we do with this? Essentially, what I do is we perform advanced endoscopy. And I hope I see all the hands go up on the next question that I'm going to ask. Okay, I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to ask the question. When I open my eyes and I turn around, I want to see every single hand go up, except maybe four or five people should not have to raise their hand. Okay, I'm going to turn around and ask the question. How many of you here have had a colonoscopy? I'm going to turn around in one, two, Three. <gasps> All the hands should go up. Oh, okay, you can put your hands down. Unless you've had a flexible sigmoidoscopy or some type of a surgery or for other reasons that you haven't been deemed having to need one. If anyone over 50, we recommend has a screening colonoscopy. If you have it, talk to me afterwards. But this is the area that we focus on. People that have gallstones in the gallbladder Will, will present with some type of a pain. Typically, it's very, very uh, predictable. The pain is right here in the right upper quadrant where our liver and our gallbladder tree is and all of our biliary system is. It's all of a sudden. It can be after the meals that we as Adventists rarely eat, which are, are greasy, <laughs> spicy, fatty foods. We try to stay away from those. Um, but people usually have a right upper quadrant pain. It's sharp all of a sudden. It can hit right after a heavy, greasy, fatty meal, or it can hit in the middle of the night at, at any hour. It can wake you up from sleep. And it will feel like it takes the wind out of you. How many of you have had that gallbladder pain? Am I describing it sort of to the, to the, to the point? Well, Sounds like what? kidney stone pain. As, yes, the kidney stones, but up here, right here at the top. So the gallbladder can have, you can have cholecystitis or, or stones in the duct. What my, we don't um, take gallbladders out, we aren't surgeons, 
But what happens is the stones in the gallbladder can be dropped into the, this bile duct, the common biliary duct, and it can obstruct, it can cause a blockage. Mm. So even when a patient goes in and has significant pain, they do have their gallbladder removed, but then guess what? As we monitor their labs the following day, or their pain, their clinical advancement, they are still in severe pain, or their labs are going up that shows a problem, that's when they call us. And what we, we do is we evaluate if there's some stones stuck in the canal here. Well, if there's some stones stuck in the canal here, we say to the patient, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, patient, we have to do an endoscopy on you. We have to look inside with the camera. How many of you have had an upper endoscopy? Okay, so some of you are familiar with that. That could be for different reasons, for, for reflex disease or GERD or pain. Well, we go in um, under deep, deep anesthesia and we clean out the canal by making what we call a sphincterotomy. It's a little hairline cut in the middle of this canal and we clean out the duct. Sometimes, this is a word we're going to use later, so try to remember it. We place a stent. Mm -hmm. It's a little plastic gadget that will open up the canal so that everything can flow like an open river. Sometimes I tell my patients, you're on the freeway, and there's a semi crossing the freeway, and no cars can get through. That's what a stone will do. Actually, I have a patient that I just discharged today. Also, I say it's like a plugged up sink. Sometimes a canal won't have a stone. The patient may not even have a gallbladder yet or anymore, but the canal can be plugged up like a plugged up sink with sludge. It's a bunch of gunk. So we have to go in there and unplug it as well. And that procedure is called an ERCP, an endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, where we clean out the canal. If a stent is left in place, we have the patient come back within a couple of weeks and we take the stent out. Simple, no problem, patient's happy, they move on their way. Um, but here, we're going to focus on pancreatic cancer. This is a pancreas. This is the tail of the pancreas. This is the body, and this is the head. Pancreatic cancer is usually found in pancreatic head masses. I would say, as I was uh, coming over this evening, I called my boss and I said, Dr. Chowdhury, aren't most of our pancreatic cancers head masses? He says, absolutely, without a doubt. He said, but Lisa, remember, this is called pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. What does that mean, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma? Well, the cells in this canal are the ones that usually start to develop and become abnormal that then infect the rest of the pancreas, and that's where pancreatic cancer comes from. The cells usually originate in the duct. That's important, okay? So the reality of what we're talking about is delays. So I won't focus too much on what's here, but be it enough to say that if there's nothing else you remember, yes? What does the pancreas do? The pancreas secretes insulin. It's one of the organs that keeps all of us in check. Diabetics, um, for example, have a pancreas that's either underproducing or not producing enough. So medications stimulate the pancreas to produce insulin to monitor or control their blood sugars. It's one of the things that it does. Um, good question. So I want you to know one thing. If you don't remember anything else that I say, because it's a lot of information, it's a lot of medical terminology, I want you to remember this. If you know of anyone that has pain right here, or here, or here, or right here, nothing between below your belly button, of course, but in this little section right here, don't underestimate it. I can't tell you how many people I talk to every day. So ma'am, when did this start? Oh, about six months ago. Mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna go away. Or sir, when did this start? Oh, about a year ago. And I thought it was gonna go away. So I would take Tums, I would take Rolates, I would take Maalox or Mylanta. I went to my doctor. They gave me some Prilosec or some Nexium. And it just didn't go away. If you have a discomfort or a pain here, pay attention to your body. It's not okay. Yes? Can this condition also um, make uh, um, diarrhea or gases in the stomach? Um, usually the digestive tract can cause a lot of symptoms that can be, uh, they overlap each other. Bloating, discomfort, uh, GERD, indigestion. But this is, this is a pain, a gnawing, bothersome pain that just doesn't go away or it'll go and come but you've never had it before 
and it comes back again, and it goes away, but it comes back again, and it goes away, but it never goes away forever. Be concerned, get it checked out, and if you're over 65, be a little bit more cognizant because pancreatic cancer tends to um, manifest itself a lot in the older than 60, 65 age population as well. So what this slide is talking about is, in the reality, along the lines of what I'm saying is, the first time a patient goes to see their private doctor, their primary care doctor, say it takes them 30 days from the, say they're being aggressive and they say, you know what, I've had this pain, I'm gonna go see my doctor. Say there's 30 days right there. And then this doctor has to contact another doctor that has to do more imaging or get them to someone like us, add another 35 days onto that. And then by the time we can get diagnosis and treatment, not even treatment, this is to talk about the diagnosis, you have to get to an advanced endoscopist for tissue. We'll go over that in a little bit. It takes a while. So you're looking at at least three to four months. Mm -hmm. This is why we can't underestimate that little persistent pain that we might be having. So bring statistics along the lines of what we're saying. For every one day of delay of the workup of pancreatic pa cancer patients, 1% increases the chance of resectable tumors becoming locally advanced, 1% increase the chance of locally advanced tumors turning metastatic, and 1% increased chance of dying from metastatic cancer. So what this slide is saying is, for every one day that we just wait and see if it goes away, six months ago or a year ago, we're increasing our chances by 1% here of something that could have been addressed to potentially becoming something that can no longer be addressed. And I, I rarely do I see a patient that says, I just got this pain last week or a month ago. It's always three months ago, six months ago, last summer, last July. And they remember when it started, but they came way, way, way too late. So, uh, when we look at this, this slide, resectability or taking out the cancer is not determined in the operating room. We are in the area of pre-op imaging. What does this mean? So sometimes someone goes in with the pain in the right lower quadrant, all of a sudden it came on suddenly, and we don't know what it, what it is. We take the person to the ER, and what is it? An append appendix, right? So they have an appendectomy, boom. They call, let's go ahead and take the patient to the OR, let's do an exploratory lap, or that means it's explore. They open up the area, it's an appendix. We found it, it's done. Pancreatic cancer is not one of those, oh, we have pain, let's go in and we're gonna diagnose it and cure it, right? It's not one of those. We are in a pre-op imaging era, which means that when you go in with this pain, they're likely going to do a CT scan, I hope. <laughs> They'll do a good, good quality CT scan it has to be a pancreatic protocol CT scan. If someone that's 15 years old goes in with abdominal pain, she does not typically need a pancreatic protocol CT scan. If my mother that's 68 goes in with abdominal pain and she's having this pain right up, right up here and she doesn't have a gallbladder anymore, they better do a pancreatic protocol.